What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeO.com, and I am back with my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Tuesday, April 27th. Now be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all of our other content goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to those sim results as we get closer to lock. And finally, let me know in the comment section who is your favorite and least favorite of my contenders for today's slate. We are rounding out the bottom of my top 10 with Carl Anthony Towns, CJ McCollum, Devontae Graham, Robert Williams, if he plays, and Robert Covington. Two Roberts. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today? It's time to find out. First up at number five, we're going to the power forward spot, and we're grabbing Christian Wood. He is 7,700, projected for 41. The goal is 49. He's in the optimal lineup 27% of the time. Now, the Rockets are going to be without John Wall for the rest of the season. That should open things up considerably. We should see Kevin Porter back as well, probably stepping into exactly what John, John Wall's role was. So, 33 minutes for Christian Wood, 1.24 fantasy points per minute, because this is a nice pace-up spot. They gain 2.7 possessions over their average, taking on a Minnesota team with a terrible defense. This game is going to be essential for DFS tonight. It could get truly crazy. 26% usage, 22 and a half real points, nine boards, two assists, two stocks. I love getting to Christian Wood. And the best benefit here, you don't actually have to roster him at center. You get him at power forward, and that makes him so much more interesting today. I don't really see a way around it. Getting Christian Wood and getting a lot of the Rockets and the Timberwolves will be very important today. Next up at number four, we are staying in the same game. We're going to the shooting guard spot. We're grabbing D'Angelo Russell. He's 6,400, projected for 35. The goal is 44. He's in the optimal lineup 27% of the time. Now, Russell was fantastic yesterday. He will be on the back, the back here, but he seems to be playing about 30 minutes a game. That's where I have him now, and I like that against Houston. 1.17 fantasy points per minute, 30% usage. That's a big one. It's him, it's Towns, and it's Edwards, and there's not much else from an offensive perspective on this team. 22 real points, five assists, three boards. You might get a steal. And you get a pace-up spot slightly, 1.3 possessions over their average, taken on Houston, and Houston's terrible. They, no, no quality defensive players to be found on this one. This is going to be an offensive track meet. We just have to hope that the shots go in. But for Russell, uh, I think he's good at scoring. He might be a little inefficient, but he'll certainly shoot the rock. I don't mind it at all. 6400 as well. That is a bargain price tag here. If Russell ever does start picking up a couple extra minutes, I mean, he's going to be north of 7K at some point in time. I love the per minute rates. So I am getting to D'Angelo Russell again today after I recommended him yesterday. We're taking a bit of a step up in tier here. Number three, small forward Jalen Brown. He is 8,100, projected for 45. The goal is 50. He's in the optimal lineup 34% of the time. Celtics are going to be without... Kemba Walker without Jason Tatum and potentially without Robert Williams, although I hope that he does play. Jalen Brown sees massive increases in his usage rate and his assist rate when those guys are off the floor. 8,100, not a problem. But you can see we moved from 27% optimal to 34. We're just, we're in a different level now. I gave him 34 minutes, but he could certainly play more. The problem is they're playing Oklahoma City and Oklahoma City is truly dreadful right now. 1.33 fantasy points per minute, 35% usage for Jalen Brown. That's 28 points, five and a half boards, four and a half assists, and two stocks in a pace up spot against arguably the worst team in the league. At a small forward spot that is notoriously difficult to fill on a six game slate. I think the raw point ceiling is really nice here. I don't think the price tag is problematic at all. I'm not even worried about the blowout all that much because I think Jalen Brown would be a pretty big part of it given the increased usage. So I see Jalen Brown as one of the best plays on the slate, but I still have two more guys ahead of him. One of those guys is the newly returning Kevin Porter, small forward eligible. So I found my small forward combo, 5,600. He's projected for 35. The goal's 41 and a half. He's in the optimal lineup 37% of the time. Now, I don't think that he's going to go straight into 36 minutes a game type stuff now that Wall is out. So I'm just giving him 32. That's exactly where I had Wall in the previous game. That's what I'm going to do for Porter now. So I do think that there is actually some upside here as well. Uh, we're talking about north of a fantasy point per minute, 26% usage, 17 and a half points, 
four boards and seven and a half assists. Kevin Porter sees a really nice assist bump when these guys are off the floor with no wall, with no Oladipo, technically speaking with no Harden, but that doesn't really work for uh, Kevin Porter. When those guys are off the floor, Porter takes over a lot of the creation, and I love it, especially, as we've already mentioned, in a matchup against Minnesota where you're gaining possessions and you're getting a situation where you don't have a good defense in front of you. I love getting to Kevin Porter at 5,600. Pay close attention to the news, though. We need to make sure that he is able to play full run. He has been out for a couple games. If he's not, walk him back a little bit. But either way, Kevin Porter is a fantastic play today. Now, before we get to that number one contender, one last reminder, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Then, follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to these sim results as we get closer to lock. And finally, let me know in the comments section, I need your favorite contender, your least favorite contender, and the contender that you think should have been on this list that you do not see. All right, this one I love, the number one contender for today's slate. It's Dame time, baby. Damian Lillard, point guard eligible, just 8,300, projected for 46. The goal is 51. He's in the optimal lineup 40% of the time. He's breaking out here. I can feel it. 1.25 fantasy points per minute in 37 minutes. That's 30% usage, 28 real points, eight assists, four boards, a steal, and a massive pace up spot against Indiana. Indiana plays really quick. 3.2 possessions over the average for Portland for Lillard in this spot. He's just simply underpriced. I think this is going to be the start of Damian Lillard's price rising. I'm expecting him to be north of 9K very soon, but for now. As a high-end value option, he gets he's the best of both worlds. He has the ceiling of being the highest raw point scorer on this slate, and he's priced at 8300 which is bonkers for a six-gamer. I don't see a way around it on FanDuel. He is unquestionably my number one play, and I expect him to be there all day. Damian Lillard is the number one contender. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Tuesday, April 27th. Now, the process show is in the books. Go watch that. There's a DraftKings version of this video somewhere around here. Click that link and check that one out as well. Strategy show with Lafayette at 10 a.m. And then that's it. I am not going to be on live before lock tonight, so you need to stay tuned to my Twitter so that you can get the updates to my sim results. Good luck tonight, everybody. Have some fun. I will see you guys again tomorrow morning for another edition of The Contenders.